Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here with some more advice for magicians. Now this week I wanted to talk about how I take into consideration different ways to approach people when you want to show them magic. Now this video is going to talk about both how to approach people during your gigs in a professional setting as well as how to approach people in a more casual setting like for example if you're hanging out with your friends and you want to show some people some magic. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some things that you should look for before you approach people to see if they are quote unquote approachable. So without further ado, and to try to keep this video as short as possible, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. So before we talk about approaching people, let's talk about what it means to be approachable. So there are certain visual cues that you should look for uh, to know if someone's approachable or not. Let's talk about the positive cues. Uh, number one, they're making eye contact. If someone's looking at you, making eye contact with you, and um, they seem to be genuinely, generally curious on what you're doing, like for example, let's just say you're playing with a deck of cards, um, you're springing them, you're, you're doing some cardistry stuff, stuff that gets people's attention. If they look up at you and, and you know they, they look genuinely curious about what you're doing, that would be a good opportunity to approach them and then ask if they want to see some magic. Also, if they obviously ask you, like, hey, can, you know, what are you doing? Or what do you do for a living? Or, you know, I noticed you had a deck of cards. Do you, do you play cards? Or, do you, are you, you know, do you do magic tricks? Obviously, at that point, they're interested. They want to see magic. It would be a good idea to approach them. Now, things to look out for um, that make them not approachable. If they refuse to make eye contact with you, um, sometimes people just don't want to talk. If you've ever been sitting at a bus stop or if you've ever been just kind of hanging out on your own and some random guy approaches you and you know you, you give them that look where you know you, you're just not interested and you just refuse to make eye contact with them, usually that means that they don't want to be bothered. Also, if you're, if you're looking at a group of people and they seem to be engaged in a very deep conversation, probably not a good idea to approach them either because you may be interrupting something, uh, some kind of conversation that they're having. Now, if they're just kind of joking or laughing and they're, you know, they're on their phones or they seem to be having fun but not necessarily having a deep conversation, I would say at that point it's okay to approach them. However, again, this is by a case-by-case -case basis, so it really... It kind of depends exactly on the types of conversations that they're having. Like, for example, the two types of conversations that I know for sure I never want to interrupt are ones where a couple is either arguing or if they are having a serious, like, you know, heart to heart kind of talk. Don't interrupt those kinds of things. And uh, secondly, uh, people that look like they're having a business conversation, I would avoid interrupting a business conversation as well because odds are if they're having kind of like a little business meeting, they're not going to want to put that meeting on hold to see you perform magic for them. So those are just a few things to look out for when it comes to approaching people and whether or not they are approachable. Now let's talk about the three ways that I generally like to approach people, get them interested in what I have to, sh to perform, and then start performing for them. Now this works great in both professional settings as well as casual settings. Now a professional setting would be defined as some kind of gig that, you're, that you are hired to perform at, such as a restaurant or a cocktail event or something where you are not introduced and need to walk up to someone and introduce yourself. This isn't necessarily gonna to apply to a formal performance where you're sitting at a table and people are seated because obviously they already know that they're there to watch you. You don't necessarily need to um, make an introduction for yourself to break the ice. They already know who you are. Um, and this also applies to, you know, like a casual setting. Like for example, if you're hanging out with your friends at the bar or if you're at the mall and you want to, you know, show some random people at the mall some magic this applies to that as well. All right, so the first method that I like to use, and these methods are in no particular order, by the way. These are just the three methods that I, I 
cycle through the most. The first method is, I call it, I call it reel them in. Reel them in basically means you're gonna do some kind of fancy flourish, or you're gonna play with a deck of cards, or you're gonna do like a coin roll on your knuckles or something like that to get their attention. You're gonna build up their curiosity with what you're doing, and then if they seem interested, Usually they'll ask like, hey, what is it that you're doing? And then you can, it's very easy for you to just say, oh, I'm a magician, I'm practicing. Would you like to see something? It makes it really easy. Or if they don't say anything, but you notice that they're making a lot of eye contact, I usually just look at them, I smile and I say, hi, I'm a magician. You guys want to see something? Usually they'll say yes. Sometimes people are shy and they don't want to be the first one to, to ask but they have that look in their eye, like they want you to do, to do something for them, but they don't want to ask or they don't want to feel like they're bothering you. If you get that look, it's okay to ask them. You know, hi, I'm, I'm a magician, would you like to see something? So that's the first way, I call it reel them in. The second way is to catch them by surprise. Now this means that you're going to perform something very quick and very visual that catches them off guard. So for example, let's just say you're working in a restaurant, right? You can walk by the table and you can notice that there's a wallet on the floor. You can pick up the wallet and ask the people at the table, excuse me, did, did someone here at this table drop their wallet? They might say no. Uh, they'll check their wallets, make sure that they all have it, right? And then you say, oh, I better check the ID to make sure, you know, to see who this belongs to. You open up the wallet, boom, it bursts into flames, it catches them off guard, they all react, they're super surprised. You put the fire out and you say, actually, you know what, I'm a magician. Would you guys like to see a magic show? So now what you've done is you've let them know that you're a magician in a very magical way. It catches them off guard and it, uh, <clears throat> It shows you whether or not they're really excited to see the magic show. Usually this quick visual thing is going to get them super excited. They're going to want to see more. Um, we'll talk about what to do if they say no in just a minute. But usually when they see something visual like that, they're going to want to see more. Now, the first method and the second method, both reeling them in and catching them off guard, work very well in casual settings uh, as well as professional settings. However... The third method that I use is the method that I use almost 95% of the time in a professional environment, whether I'm working a cocktail event or strolling at a restaurant. And this method is to introduce yourself as uh, part of the staff. Now, you're not gonna tell them that you're part of the staff, but the way that you talk to them and your body language is gonna communicate that you are someone with authority that works at the event that they are attending. So. To give you like a quick rundown, uh, I guess the easiest way is to just kind of show you my script that I use when I'm approaching a table or a group at a restaurant. So I walk up to a table, I introduce myself, I say, hello my friends, how are we doing this evening? Is everything looking good so far? How's the food? You know, make a, a quick, uh, you know, five second conversation, maybe ask them a quick question about how their evening is going, how their food's tasting, something to that effect. And then I would say, my name is Michael. Uh, I'm actually a professional magician and my job is to go from table to table and show people magic while they're waiting for their meals to arrive. I was just curious to know if you'd be interested in a small uh, five minute magic show while you wait for your food. Uh, that way what you've done is you've used, you have established that you're not just some guy that's walking up to them with a deck of cards that wants to show them magic but that you are actually a paid professional that is being hired by the restaurant to entertain them. Now that is very, very important because people don't wanna be bothered at their table when they're getting ready to eat. However, they don't mind the restaurant staff coming up and talking to them because they already know that the restaurant staff is gonna be talking to them to serve them, to bring them refills, to take their order and stuff like this. <laughs> so if you let them know that you're working with the restaurant, that it's your job to go from table to table and offer a magic show, you know, then they're going to appreciate that you walked up and asked. Now I usually walk up and ask, I use this method, this third method, like I said, almost 100% almost of the time when I'm in a professional environment, especially at a restaurant, 
but also at like cocktail events and weddings and, and stuff like this where you're going to be approaching people uh, in small groups. Now, you can use the other methods available for professional events as well. For example, you can walk through the restaurant uh, with you know, coins out or a deck of cards in your hand so that people kind of get this idea that, oh, this guy's a magician, he's roaming around. And then if they make eye contact to you, you can approach them and then ask them to see a magic show. Or, uh, you know, you can do the catch them off guard thing like with the fire wallet. Or you can say, you know, uh, excuse me, sir, did you, did you drop your spoon or something? Pick up the spoon, make it disappear, turn it into a coin, do some coin magic, something like that. Anytime you do the second one, you want to make sure that you're doing something quick and visual. But like I said, the third method, the approaching them as uh, someone with authority and then asking for permission to perform at their table is probably the one that I use the most. Now, I want to wrap this video up with just a couple of quick points. Uh, number one, make sure that no matter what, if you use any of these three methods, that once you've introduced who you are, that you always ask if they want to see magic. You should never assume that they want to see magic and just start performing at their table. So for example, let's use the, the, the second idea, the catching them off guard. Let's say you use the wallet gimmick. You lit the wallet on fire. You've established that you're a magician. You should not then immediately take extreme burn out of your wallet and start turning $1 bills into 20s and, and doing bill changes and stuff like that. You should first ask, you know, would you guys like to see some more? Same thing with uh, the reeling them in approach. If they look curious, you should ask, would you guys like to see something? And then, of course, with the third method, you're, you're introducing yourself and you're asking for permission to perform for them. Never just start performing at a table and going into your act and then, you know, like 30 seconds into your act, turns out they didn't want to see magic and then they have to stop you. Or they give you that awkward look like they don't want you there, but they're too shy to interrupt you. It's just, it makes the whole thing awkward and it can be kind of embarrassing to be honest with you. So it's a good idea to just ask first before you start performing. That's tip number one. Tip number two is dealing with rejection. So let's just say you approach a table and you explain to them who you are and you ask if they want to see a magic show and they say no that's okay it's not a big deal i actually noticed that a lot of times when people say no initially they eventually end up wanting to see a magic show so let's say you approach a table you introduce yourself who you are that you're a magician and then they say no thank you this will be usually for one of two reasons number one they just don't want to see a magic show or they're busy, they're in the middle of a conversation, something like that, right? Or number two, usually they don't want to pay extra money for a magic show. So usually if, if it's the first option, I will let them know, you know, that's totally fine. You don't want to see a magic show. I completely understand. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to be here for, for a while. So if you guys change your mind and you want to see, you want me to come to your table, and show you something, I'll be happy to do so. Just make sure you let me know. And then you leave. Don't beg them to stay at your table. Don't be like, come on, it's going to be a lot of fun, or the kids will love it, or anything like that. You ask them to see a magic show, they say no. Politely they politely decline your offer. All you have to do is just thank them for their time, let them know that you're going to be around if they want to see something to come get you, and then move on to the next table. Now, the second time... Sometimes they will say um, something like, you know, we, we, we can't afford to pay for a magic show or we don't have any money for you or something like that. Because a lot of times people think that you're just kind of hustling for tips because a lot of performers at restaurants, they do work just along, you know, just on tips. So obviously, if you're one of these people that are just working for tips, it might be a good idea to then go ahead and, and thank them for their time and move on to the next table. However, if you're getting paid by the restaurant to be there, if they don't want to tip you, you should not just not perform at that table because they don't want to tip you. You should let them know, you know, I really appreciate that, that, you want to, that you want to tip me. And if you can't afford to, you know, that's totally fine because guess what? The restaurant hired me to be here. 
specifically to entertain you guys. So there's no obligation. You don't have to pay me anything. In fact, if you want, keep that tip money, whatever money you have extra, put it to your server because they're working a lot harder than I am. But the offer is still on the table. If you'd like to see a magic show, I'd be happy to show you. If not, uh, thank you so much for your time and I'll be happy to, uh, you know, to go on to another table. That way, there's no pressure on them. They don't feel obligated. At this point, you've cleared the air with them that there's no tip involved. So if they do want to show you, or if they do want to still see the magic show, knowing that they have no financial obligations, then you can perform for them. If they still are like, you know what? No, thank you. Then same thing as number one. You just move on and say, all right, my friends, thank you so much uh, for your time. I'll be around. If you want to see something, just let me know. I'll be happy to come back to your table. You'll find more often than not that the tables that you initially went approached and they said no, they end up being the ones to raise their hand and, and flag you over to come show them magic. Because they're seeing the other tables having a good time. <laughs> and now they're like, oh crap, we shouldn't have said no. We should have seen the magic show. Hell, it's free. Like, why didn't we, why didn't we just say okay? You know, and then they'll call you over. And so, like I said, these are not necessarily the ways that are gonna work for every single person, uh, but these are the ways that work most for me personally. If you have any ways that you approach people, whether it be in a professional environment or uh, you know, kind of a, a more casual environment, please feel free to go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know how it is that you like to approach people. Uh, if you have any questions for me, things that weren't made too clear in this video, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer those questions immediately. I respond to all of my comments pretty quickly, uh, so don't feel shy to go ahead and uh, leave a comment and ask any questions that you may have. And uh, if you really enjoy this video and, and you think that your friends might you know, get a kick out of these videos as well, Please feel free to go ahead and share with them and uh, let them know to subscribe. If you have not already subscribed yourself, please feel free to do so. I'm going to be putting out magician videos like this every week, including tutorials, reviews, and magic performance videos, as well as these advice videos. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And uh, until next time, everyone, keep practicing. See you next week.